This matrix shows the relationships between the example elements in the profile. So you can see the functional element traces to the conceptual. These logic elements trace to the inheritance and functional. Uh, they, they generalize them. And then the physical element um, realizes the logical. So here is a table with a functional block. Note that we've documented it correctly. Uh, the all specific classifiers column shows that the logical system uh, is inheriting from it. And note that we have several requirements that are satisfied uh, by this block. And this is a roll-up property that shows you all the requirements that are satisfied by you or one of the properties or elements that uh, you own. And we'll show that in a future video. Here's a table with the inheritance block. Note that I didn't document it, so that would be something we would fix in a quality check. Note that it's being specialized by the logical system block. And again, this has several requirements that satisfy it. This table shows all the logical elements, again, showing what's, uh, what they're inheriting from, shows the operations that they happen to inherit. That's a custom property. This shows all the downstream elements that realize them. And this custom property shows all of the requirements, that, again, that are satisfied by the element directly or by its properties. Finally, the physical elements table shows us all of the physical elements. Uh, and this happens to show us the requirements that they realize. So it goes uh, and uses the meta chain navigation to look at the logical elements and roll up all the requirements that they've inherited or are directly connected. This shows all of the requirements that are directly satisfied by the physical blocks or their elements. And then the requirements gap takes the difference of these two. So it excludes anyone that's actually satisfied. And so you can see that there's two requirements that you're supposed to realize or that are assigned to you via realization. There's one that you actually do satisfy via direct satisfy relationship, and that leaves the one that's missing. So this is a very painless way that as requirements are connected properly to the physical model, uh, this gap basically gets burned down um, and uh, eventually goes away as you connect up all the requirements properly. So the realized requirements informs you about what you're supposed to do uh, as far as the requirements that are allocated or realized by you. The satisfied shows the ones that you've connected up to your physical elements, and the requirements gap shows you the ones uh, that are yet to be properly connected.